Now we can turn our attention to the questions that came up during the webinar. Carl, Allie, and of course Patrick will be able to answer those questions and demonstrate for you just exactly what it is. This lesson was brought to you by Affinity Insurance Agency, so you be sure to contact them before you renew your E&O insurance. So Carl, it looks like this is a good point for uh, any questions that may have come in, and uh, if you've got any questions, go ahead and uh, give them to us, Carl. Super. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Allie. Hey, thanks, everybody. Uh, we're having some questions come in. Patrick, if you would be so kind, though, if you could throw the email address up there one more time. Folks, we're at the conclusion of the live demo. We're going to handle some Q&A and point out some additional features and benefits. But should you have a question um, based on the presentation that Patrick and Allie have run you through, uh, please feel free to send that question to us. We've got a little time uh, at the balance of the webinar to handle. Uh, your questions that come in, and we'll do our best to either answer them verbally, point you to a reference material, or if I can, if Patrick will indulge me, when he build a demo, uh, a couple things uh, live. So Patrick, one question that did come in, um, we've gotten a couple questions on the uh, submitting policies unbound, some clarity around that. So perhaps you could talk a little bit more about the unbound policy process uh, and maybe point our folks to a resource uh, piece that's out there on the web. Uh, sure thing, Carl. I'm going to go back to the uh, policy center screen and really the uh, submitting unbound is very similar to submitting bound applications. It's just as you go through the application process, the submission process, it will come up to a point where, where it does choose to be uh, either unbound unapproved or bound unapproved. And uh, what what would happen then is when you upload all the documentation and on the bound unapproved submission, submit payment, uh, or on the unbound submission, don't submit payment, just the documentation, then an underwriter would be assigned, and uh, then the underwriter would, would go through, finish the process, and would send you uh, some additional information later. And we have detailed that in one of our modules, the new business, new submission through issuance module. That, that module will take you all the way from uh, the very beginning stages of your quote all the way through uh, underwriting's, underwriting's piece of that uh, new submission that's unbound or bound unapproved, and uh, how, how those activities would look for you when you uh, get that back from underwriting. Good. Great. Uh, we had a question come in from Paulette. Paulette's asking, do we have to have the client sign a change of agent letter in order for us to be able to do a quote on a new policy if the client already shows in the system? Uh, obviously, Paulette was paying attention when Patrick demoed this account visibility issue or feature. Uh, if you are working with a client and see that they already have an account established with Citizens, uh, it is your cue to prompt the client or to ask the client, what current insurance do you currently have with Citizens? Are they trying to insure the same property or is there a different property? If they are trying to insure the same property and are just looking for a different agent, uh, you might want to consider the AOR opportunity with that client versus a new submission. But you can quote that client on the system. There will be no prohibition about it, but just be aware you could be in a situation where we're double insuring a property, so you want to be cautious about that. Uh, but there's no need to get them to sign just to perform the quote if they're interested. Okay. Questions are coming in, folks. Please keep them coming. Patrick, a question on logins. Um, question and clarity around the login, clearinghouse, e-pass, policy center. Could you maybe bring some clarity to that whole issue for us? Sure thing, Carl. Uh, I am on the uh, agent's uh, training and reference material site, so I'm going to switch over to the systems access site, and which brings us back to this page. We've seen it already day once. Uh, on this page, you have the opportunity to click on Property Insurance Clearinghouse or Citizens Insurance Suite. If I click on that Citizens Insurance Suite, it brings me to the Citizens Authentication Gateway login screen. This is where you would log in using your, your Citizens Authentication Gateway login information. Uh, you can log in to either Clearinghouse or Policy Center. Once you entered your information and clicked log in, you would get a screen that showed an icon that you could click for Clearinghouse 
or another icon that you could click for Policy Center to choose which system you want to log into. So it's the same login for both of those systems. Super. Thank you, Patrick. Okay, Patrick, if you'd be so kind as to pull up the, uh, the website where our training materials and education materials are. We have a couple questions that came in that I'll address, but I also want the opportunity to point out uh, to the folks on the phone where we can find some additional materials. So um, we did have a question come in uh, around adding a mortgagee clause and just the general functionality around working with mortgagees and changes on policy. Um, Patrick, if you could point the folks out to that add or changing a PFC, a mortgagee job aid in the servicing the policy area, that would be very helpful. Uh, folks, I'd encourage you, that question has a, a lot of issues around it, but I would encourage you to go through that job aid. And Patrick, if you open up that job aid, I just want to give the folks on the phone uh, a sense and a feel for the level of detail that we put in this job aid. As Patrick slowly cruises through this job aid, you'll see that we've lined up in a step-by-step -step fashion, what does it take to do the request that you're trying to accomplish in Policy Center. And as Patrick scrolls through this document, you'll also see not only the text that you can follow, but we've also included screenshots of the relevant screens in Policy Center that you'll flow through to accomplish this particular transaction. So my, I encourage everyone to get familiar with the job aids that are out there because we built them and bucketed them in a way that should be helpful and impactful to your agency new business section, servicing the policy section, and then inside of those are specific tasks that we know agencies need to perform every day, and we build job aids accordingly uh, on the mortgage piece. So thank you, Patrick, for that. If you'll morph back out to the menu, uh, i got another question coming in that I'll point you to in just a minute. Um, How do we upload or make a payment via EFT? And I, I know, Patrick, I know we demonstrated this as well, where we still can sweep an agency's bank account or a consumer's bank account. That functionality is available. But, Patrick, there's a very, very good module out there called Making an Online Electronic Payment. And I wanted Patrick to point that one out to you as well. And, again, modules, folks, modules are designed for you to sit down, have a cup of coffee, and watch the show, watch the screens flow. And you'll get a step-by-step -step instruction on how to make that happen. We've also, and I'll ask Patrick down at the bottom of the page, we also had heavy demand to make those modules printable, take them out of the movie format and get them down on a PDF, and that functionality is also available to you down below. So we're doing what we can to present the information to you, uh, to let you self-study, or in the moment be able to go out and look for a job aid that's specific to your question that's intended to walk you through uh, and help you accomplish exactly what you need. Give me a second, folks. Just a couple more questions coming in. Question on, do we have to withdraw the quotes that an insured declined? I believe Patrick demoed this to you. You're not required to withdraw the quote. Okay, the quote can be retained in the system, but if you do withdraw the quote, it will be available to you for 30 days afterward. So, again, it's your choice whether or not to withdraw the quote. You may want to hold it there. The customer may come back. You may want to leave it. There's no requirement. But if you want to declutter your system but then come back to it, Policy Center will retain and hold that quote for at least 30 days. Got a question from Barbara. Uh, there are five days to submit the required documents. However, at what point is the application considered bound? Application is considered bound once you select request approval. Okay, that is the step that would cause the policy to become bound. Okay, Jane's got a question. Patrick, a real popular one. Back to the numbers again. The account contains basically uh, what's the difference between the policy number and the account number? So, Patrick, you kind of run through, again, there's two differences. We have them for two reasons, and I know you demoed how they look, but could you maybe run through that account number, policy number scenario again? Sure thing, Carl. And uh, I'm showing now uh, my policy center, uh, and I've got a, an account brought up, that account that we created today. And uh, you'll see that I've got the, I'm at the account file summary level, so I've got the account number here. And as I, as I look down the screen, I've got uh, the policy number right here in the middle. And if I click that, that takes me back to my policy summary level. Uh, 
And uh, these are these uh, these numbers are simply ways of identifying number one, identifying the customer by the account number, but also uh, allowing this so that if a customer, let's just say a an insured had uh, two or three rental properties, they could have them under one account on separate policies uh, under that in identified into that one account. You could also uh, put a an account holder that uh, could be different from the first named insured, but uh, in most cases our account holder is going to be our first named insured. And uh, these numbers are going to look very similar to each other, uh, but, they, but they are different uh, ways of tracking the individual. So if you if you know the account number, we can find any policies that are attached to that. And if you know the policy number, we can find in the uh, in the policy level what who what the account is and get that get that additional information. The uh, policy level is where most of the work is being done. That's where that's where you're adding uh, you're making policy changes and where you would send add documents as well. Great. So accounts and policy numbers unique to Policy Center. It's a new thing that we'll contend with uh, in the system. Obviously, the policy numbers are different than what you're used to in EPAS. We acknowledge and recognize that difference. That's why we're speaking to everybody early and, and making you aware of those, uh, those changes. Um, general question on the rhythm around approval and underwriting payments and forms. Obviously, Patrick did a great job of telling you that all the forms need to be appropriately uploaded and acknowledged as uploaded. And a clarification, payment needs to be received on the policy and posted to the policy. At that point, an underwriter will review. Underwriters will not review policies until forms are completed and payment is posted. Okay? So that is a, uh, an underwriting process that will be part of policy. 